Creole Parametric 4.0, Lesson 13, Part 4. In this last portion of the chapter, we're going to add a dowel pin to the base plate. So we're going to start off by, we're in the model, the assembly is active. We're going to click on Tools, Dowel Pin, and there's the point or axis. Now we don't have one yet, so let's go back over and stick in a point. And we're going to put the point somewhere in this area right here. And you're going to drag and drop your offset references to the two planes. You can, you can drop them to the edges too. I always like to do it to a plane because a plane is not going to be affected by other geometry very often compared to the edge. So that's why I always select the plane. It's more stable. And <clears throat> as far as our dimensions go, we are, let me see here. I thought we were like uh, three inches in and one and a half in the other direction. All right. And, you know, you can always change the view if you want to see something a little bit uh, more, a little clearer. I think top might do it. Yeah, it did. And you can see where it's going right now. Control D got me back into the isometric, but I really want to rotate it around and refit it and then zoom up so we can see it. Okay, so there's our point. Middle mouse button to finish. <coughs> now here's a, I've got to make sure I turn this on. So I'm going to put a point and the axes on. And my selection of colors, I guess, is okay, but maybe could have been better since all of the axes are in that similar shade of tan brown. All right. <clears throat> so what I want to do is keep this active, the point. Select on axes. Should put an axis through the point. Hold down your control key, and for your second reference, you want this and you want it to be normal or 90 degrees. You can see you have only one choice there in this case. Click OK. Now I'm going to go up to my tools and click on dowel. And if you have this option, follow through. Select the point. Select the reference where it's going to start. OK. And open up your dialog. Like so. And this is going to be in inches. And it's going to be, let's see what I wanted. Hardened ground machine. OK. It's going to be one half inch diameter. It's going to be two and a quarter long. Top bore. Depth. Two and a quarter. Like that, so it'll be flush on the top. Previews everything. Looks like we've got everything like in the book. Click OK. And there is our hole and our dowel. Now, I'm going to collapse a few things over here in the model tree. And basically what we want to do is, like we did before, this is our, it says moved copy. So I'm, I'm picking on here all the way through here, like so. And going to turn it into a group. And that group, I'm going to pattern. And I can't remember what type of a pattern we used for the last one here. We 
be used direction, I think, or dimension. I'm going to shut this off, make it a little bit clearer. So the dimensions here, we got them in two different directions. Uh, if we pick this one here, it's going to be, ooh, I'm not sure. I'll try 18.5. can't remember, to be honest. And that one is two in that direction. And in the other direction here, again, I don't remember what it was. So I will make it uh, 4.5. And that one is going to have two, two in each direction. So it looks like I'm a little too far over on this one here. I'm going to put it in on four for now. You can always change it. So it looks like I'm not even halfway down here, the distance. So I wish I remember what it was. I don't want to have to look, truthfully. Well, oh, it's 40. Okay, so let's just go with 30, 38 for now. Close. No cigar, though. I'm going over the top. So I'm just going to leave it. It's not a big deal. We can always change that dimension later. Check, like so. And we have our dowel pins. The dimensions are not so good. Like so. Dowel pin and zoom up over here. And follow the steps in the book. I think we have to do one more pattern, but I'm not going to bother to go over it right now. But you had a chance to do quite a few different patterns here. Oh, I'm getting a technical error right here, probably because I went back and forth between my programs too much. I may end up having to lose this. Ah, I did. All right. Well, we were at the end of the lesson anyway. Uh, the last thing I really wanted to show you is the mounting, uh, the uh, reference viewer. And I'm going to click on my Creo parametric again and try to reload it. You don't get too many errors like that, but they do happen. And that's why in the book it tells you to save every couple minutes. It's going to retrieve. Hopefully, we'll see where it retrieves it. And it didn't do a very good job retrieving it. Did so I will open up the mounting bracket. We can take a look at it again. This is the completed one anyway. But you don't save it, you don't got it. That's the thing. <clears throat> Always remember that, especially with PTC products. They do not automatically save for you. So here's the completed model. And I'm going to go into my information and reference viewer, like so, and dependencies, and open up this. And you can see my references for this particular project. You can see all the references. A lot of um, patterns, a lot of internally created dowel and screw holes, and also putting in those standard parts using the program. So it's going to create dependencies you don't even realize you're getting. Close. And lastly, let's do a drawing real quickly. No default template. Um, we'll just do empty is OK. And I'm going to insert a general view, put it right there. And you can see, I can go over here and I can select isometric. Um, let's do the scale a little bit bigger. Well, that's too big or not. That's pretty big. So. 
I, let's go back to view type. And over here, you can see, you can actually pick different items right off the list. For our purposes, though, we're going to go and use angles. And I'm just going to guess, to be honest, 45. And you can adjust your view using these ends. It's kind of cumbersome. It's much better to do it in the in the assembly and then take and put that view in here. But you can adjust things. You can use geometry references. There's like front. Let's say you want this to be facing the front. You can click on that and then this to be facing the top. So y there's things that you can do to reorient your model right while it's in a drawing. You know, usually it's just some small tweaks you want to do. You don't want to do large changes to it. So again, it's much better to be in your assembly, finish an assembly view, save that view, and then use that view when you get over to the, the drawing. Go back over to the drawing here. All right, this concludes lesson 13.